Hi there guys, welcome back to Same Ship Different Day and a very warm welcome to all our new subscribers. I don't know if you've seen, I'm sure you have, but the last video was very successful. I think as I talk to you now, it's hit about 23,000 views, 23,000. And I'm out of nearly 800 subscribers, 770 something I think at the moment, which is just unbelievable. Only four weeks ago, I was just talking to you and saying thank you for hitting 100 subs. So this really is a big achievement for me. And I cannot tell you how appreciative I am for your support. Lots of good feedback, lots of good questions as well on that video as well as some of my older ones. So it's great for me as well to go back and check those out as well. Now a small idea I've had for future vlogs. I'm looking at doing a, maybe a question and answer session, a bit of a thank you and uh, get you involved as well. Now that we have more subscribers, more people watching the content on this channel, hopefully you have people coming up with questions. I had some excellent questions on those on that last video and previous as well. Um, so what I'll do is I'll let you ask all the questions uh, below in this video and then what I'll do is I'll not reply at this stage, I will instead wait until a future video either. If I get enough questions just from this one, I'll make it soon. If not, I may wait, I may wait for one or two videos to come out before I accumulate all those questions and come back to you. I will try to answer every single one. Obviously, as always, guys, my views and my opinions do not reflect those of Princess Cruises or any company I work for. This is just my own. I'm coming to you um, as a crew member on one of these ships and I wanted to let you know what's going on and give you a bit of an update and show you my uh, my opinion and my reflection on it. Today though, um, let me start with some more good news. The Coral Princess is now passenger free. All guests have disembarked the Coral Princess. We successfully got our last few off in Fort Lauderdale two days ago. Um, so now that that is complete, we just have the crew left. We stand about 720 crew on board. So the next step now is obviously to get off the rest of the crew that are looking to be repatriated and transfer them to the Emerald Princess who will be taking them back to Asia uh, with a final destination of Manila in order to repatriate those crew. So they're hoping to leave in the, within the next few days. Uh, so obviously that is something that has to be sorted out. Uh, we should be able to start probably the day after next. Um, once they're back with us at the anchorage and we can make that transfer happen. We've successfully completed the transfer on the Sky, which you saw, and uh, also then the next day was the transfer on the Caribbean Princess, which is great, so it's all going to plan so far. Once they're off, we should be left with less than 200 crew on board, which is excellent, it's just minimum manning in order to maintain um, the safe operation of the ship and obviously compliance um, with the regulations. But today I wanted to talk to you about what's been going on over in Manila at the moment, in Manila Bay specifically. Uh, currently, if I'm looking on marine traffic, there was 18 uh, passenger vessels um, in the area, in the bay at that point. I think the Royal Princess arrived today as well. So all of those ships have gone there in order to repatriate their crew members. Um, you can see on the map there's uh, lots of different symbols from marine traffic. So the dark blue ones uh, represent the ships and then I've this next photo shows you all the names of the vessels, well, more or less, uh, so you can get an idea of which ships and which companies have vessels in that bay at the moment. Now obviously, lots of regulations, lots of things coming out from various governments, including in the Philippines and government authorities that are saying and specifying how and when crew can disembark. For the majority of the ships that are there, what they've done is they've arrived and the government have requested them to do a 14 day quarantine, just like we did on the coal, in order to prove that all crew members are healthy. On that point, actually, I can tell you now that there are no crew members in isolation or quarantine left on the coal princess, which means that hopefully, touch wood, we have a completely healthy ship at the moment. So that's excellent, excellent news. Anyway, so people have getting to the, well, they are getting to the point now where they're completing their 14 day quarantine and looking to slowly disembark which should stop be starting to happen. Um, some are also being tested from what I've seen uh, online and heard from various friends uh, that are over there at the moment. Uh, and then another process, I believe, if they're not gonna complete the 14 day quarantine, um, as more and more ships are now arriving, what they are able to do is do a fast test. So they're testing the crew members before they are able to disembark the vessel. And those test results come back within two to three days. If they test positive, then they're taken to a medical facility. If they test negative, then they're allowed to go home to their family and friends which is excellent news it means we're getting there we're slowly getting the crew home passengers at home just a few left on the sky princess on the way back to europe now and uh, it's a very successful repatriation process so far which is excellent 
Now, with this many ships in Manila Bay, that's the concern, that's sort of the topic for me to discuss today. I mean, it's not really a port that's used to having so much, such a high demand for various ships at the moment. I think if you can hear my whistle, that's actually the Coral Princess. Sorry, the Emerald Princess, just leaving now. Let's have a look. Okay, sorry about that. So yeah, so the game world is just heading back to Fort Lauderdale. They're going to go there and uh, take on some more supplies, obviously, before this long voyage uh, to Asia. And they do still have some American uh, citizens and Canadian citizens on board, which I believe will be disembarking tomorrow, hopefully, uh, and flying home, which is excellent news as well. Um, so I was saying that in Manila Bay at the moment, there are all, all these cruise ships. And the question is, is the port capable of supplying these ships with fuel, food, water, if they're not able to produce their own fresh water, um, for the length of time it's going to take to complete various uh, checks and quarantine processes? So it's very quite an interesting question. And I think a worry for a lot of the crew members out there at the moment, not just the Filipino crew members on board, because obviously they're looking to go home and they're in the right place. You've got lots of crew that are heading off to other countries afterwards. Um, and so they're concerned, understandably, about whether they have the capacity in that port um, to look after them. So far from what I've heard, it's going successfully. Like I said, now that this quarantine period is coming to an end for most of the ships, more and more crew members will be getting off. And then it starts the next phase. As I said, there's other crew members on board from the Asian um, continent and so they'll be going back to various uh, countries such as India and so what's going to be happening is similar to what we were doing over here with the transfers between ships in order to get the crew members to Asia what's going to be happening now is that um, by country alone by nationality all these crew members will go onto individual sh individual ships and they'll then be sent off to continue the repatriation process obviously this is going to take quite a while best case scenario would be that the airports are open and we can fly everyone home but clearly that just isn't happening at the moment so we have to get people home somehow so 18 ships or 19 ships maybe now with the Royal Princess in Manila Bay that's a lot of cruise ships and a lot of potential crew members on board you're probably looking at 500 to a thousand per ship some sometimes more on each depending on whether there have been inter transfers done within the company so that means what you're looking at, over 10,000 maybe of crew members there to be fed, watered, looked after, burning fuel in the port for the, in order to keep the ship running. So uh, it's an interesting question. I hope that people did prepare for that. Obviously governments are at a stretch as it is with all that's going on. So this has to be something that's taken into consideration. Like I say so far, um, not really caused a big issue, but something for people to think about. Um, certainly something that I'm thinking about. We are going to be one of the last ships in this area, and previously we had lots and lots of ships here, and they were getting some issues, were having some issues, getting all the supplies they needed in Port Everglades, and doing various transfers. Often ships have been sharing resources, as you'd expect in the same company and even across brands. Um, so that's been very good. Uh, so hopefully they can do the same now over there. We're in a good position now. We are uh, the last ship here, and we have the supplies that we need um, before we head down to a layup position. Anyway, I think that's it for me today, guys. Uh, thank you for checking in with me. Thank you again for all the support that you've been showing this last week. It is truly mind-blowing what's, uh, what's happened and what can be achieved in such a short space of time. I've changed the end video. I hope you stay to see it and uh, enjoy. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for staying with me right through to the end there, guys. Uh, enjoy this beautiful sunset at sea. If you did enjoy the video and you haven't already, please subscribe, hit that little bell to get a notification every time I upload something. And I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thank you very much for your support and take care.